afternoon on the request hour. Ricky, you've got something to tell us. What? In your role as head of speech, yeah. you said you were going to speak. Oh, no, no, I've just got a, a fact story <laughs> about a new club. It's, it's a club I'd, um, I've already heard about. It's called the Chill Club, and it's um, upstairs um, at the King's Head, and it's sort of really laid back, and you go in and sit on scatter cushions and be hippie and, and chill out and drink till one and stuff. And uh, they have, like, little acoustic sessions, and um, that's uh, this Saturday, Saturday the 31st. Wait, I think it's every other... I think it's every other Saturday at the King's Head in Fulham. Oh, right, yeah. And uh, um, I've heard good things about it, and it was sold out last week, so I said get there early. Doors are at um, 8.30, and a bar till uh, 1, no entrance after 11 p.m., and uh, it, it's a fiver. And oh, it's meant cool. to be really cool to sit down, sort of, you know, trip, hoppy, folky, portis, heady, jangly sort of stuff. Right up your street, Sergis. Not Ooh. Ben's though, he likes clubbing, doesn't he? Late clubs with like loud music. And, he does, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. He get, goes Bolt, to bed. He didn't come out of Birmingham. Yeah. And talking about that, I mean, I st no one has phoned to confirm or deny. I the heard the dish. Thing, so. well, not the actual dish, not the pot, not the lump of clay, but the stuff in it, the particular blend of herbs and spices that we now know as Balti. Originated yeah, in, in Birmingham. Birmingham. And ruling it as valid. Maybe yeah. he's right. Hold on, no, because it's not the blender spot. It is the fact that it's called Balti because you eat it out of the pot, and that I think he's right. You're embarrassing yourself now, Gervais. Oh God, I'm backtracking. But thinking about it, yeah, it's not the ingredients. It's the important thing is that it's cooked in that, and of course they didn't invent that there. They, I See, think he's right, Sturgis. Well, in that case, Slade, it is then. No, Black Sabbath. Slade, Slade. I'll get lost. I Slade. And if we're counting Led Zeppelin, if we're counting, Le if we're counting Led Zeppelin, obviously Led Zeppelin. No. Black Sabbath. Sabbath are better than Zeppelin. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Oh, come on. No, no, you're wrong. You're, you're having a mental aberration if you think. Go on, give that, me an example. Well, there's a fantastic story. Uh, just the ludicrous, uh, ludicrousness. Is that right? Where's that word? Yeah, That's the word Ludicrosity. Now. That'll do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, the, Tony Iommi was asked when they hit big in America what it was like for Black Sabbath, and he said, oh, I was mad. We went back to the hotel, and there was like 10 satanists sitting outside the hotel room, all dressed in black with black candles. So he blew the candles out and sung happy birthday to them. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So that but, is But Led Zeppelin said, and I think that sums it up. Are you squeezing your lemon? Yeah, I'm <laughs> squeezing my little lemon. I'm putting my little uh, cocktail <laughs> chipolata on the table yeah. between two pickled onions and seeing if that And the juice is running down your leg. And, yeah, and the juice <laughs> yeah. is burning down my leg, indeed. Well, we've embarrassed ourselves. Yes. I think, in a way, we might have embarrassed XFM. And, and I, I know... Certainly, maybe, maybe, we've embarrassed yes. London. London. Yeah. XFM 104.9. It's just gone quarter past three on a Wednesday afternoon. It's the request hour. It's your choice of music. I think we'll have some more music now. This is for Gary O'Donnell, who says chocolate is the best thing to come out of Birmingham. I can't say the brand name because then apparently I'm advertising. But it's uh, like chocolate. Out of Bourneville. Yeah. That's not yeah. like you to advertise, is it, Sturge? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. No, no. 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 I wouldn't, I wouldn't, no. no, Sturge, I wouldn't say you advertise. I wouldn't say at. I wouldn't say at. No. no. I would no. say at. I, I mean, you don't want to be pampered. No. No. The no. sky's the limit. The yeah. sky is the limit. You know, uh, no. Exactly. It's like you've won the lottery. It's the dry wife week that I like. Yeah. <laughs> Public enemy. Anthrax. Bring the noise. That's for uh, Gary O'Donnell this afternoon on the request hour. It's XFM 104.9. It's just gone 20 past three. Are we going to give away your uh, prize that you bought in yeah, specially? Yeah, we have a winner. Mark Adams from Harrow. Oh. With his undercracker explanation. Yeah. It is the same one that dropped off Duffo. Is it? He just called. Well, he's a star. He's won it. He'll be able to... Uh, <laughs> Gary's voice check challenge. How good are you at imitating comedian Michael Barrymore? Try this famous catchphrase. All right. You'll be able to do that. <laughs> yeah, You'll yeah, be able to impress that. your friends and yeah, family. That's yeah. just it's like, I can do it. All right. See? Bro, bro, <laughs> yeah. Can where I is he? Where, where's Barrymore? Yeah. Where, where is he? Well, he's at the what, back. Are you, are, are you all right at the back? Then? And obviously Norman yeah. Collier. Wow. Norman Collier. That's Norman Collier there. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Hey, my name is Michael Kane. So, yeah. Hey, yeah. it's like he's in the studio. Actually, it is nice to see you, Claire, to see you, um, nice. 
Oh, oh these are great that's tips. Brilliant. He, he didn't just he didn't well, I've to keep Why taking off playing? the pop shield. <laughs> I know because I can hit it and be Norman Collier. Alright. Oh, um That really hurts uh, my uh, ears. I believe if they if they were gonna rename this book they'd call it the Bible too. The good book. <laughs> the yeah, good it's the, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a beautiful thing. And Mark Adams your... didn't just like it wasn't grateful for what he claimed it. He said, <laughs> Yes, I, I, I <laughs> claim <laughs> that book. Really? Yeah. He claimed that with us. Quite address. rightly. He actually, is the winner. Because we we'd forgotten about it actually, so, so thanks yeah. for reminding us. No, that's great. Yeah. That's yours. Have we got his address of me? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, fine. Marvellous. I've completely lost my train of thought now. What's oh, I going to do next? What's the chances of that? Usually you're so slick, you know, where you are together. The good links, you can string a sentence together. No, um, it's, it's obviously <laughs> no, our fault. somebody else. Let's, let's, let's leave the studio and see how good Claire is. We'll leave the studio. Go on. Right. Yeah, if you would. Claire, Claire, We're Claire, off. This. Yeah. this is going to be pretty good, I imagine. Yeah. Okay. okay, I'll see you in a minute then. Yeah, okay. All right then. See ya. <sighs> no, it's still not working. Wednesday afternoons in the capital with Fluke Atom Bomb on the request now this afternoon as requested by Phil. I've got my train of thought back. Yeah. It works. Great. Yes. Marvellous. Um, well it's worth waiting for as well. Incredibly well. It's yeah. going incredibly well. Now, you may remember all this week I've been trailing a very special guest that was going to be joining us this afternoon. Martin Clunes is going to be here. The boy Clunes. Sadly, as you've probably noticed, he's not. No. Um, he's a very busy man. Yeah, he's there's got lots lot of stuff it's, to do. Yeah, it's all the press to, for the launch in that Terence Higgins um, yeah. trust campaign. Exactly. For so, I mean, that's cool with us. And he's going to give us a call on Friday. He is indeed. Which he's will be brilliant. Week. But, I mean, I've got Matt in instead. Yeah. Uh, he's got big ears. They're beautiful and big. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you smell of booze well, as well. Well, yeah, there yeah. is that, but, you know. Hold on. No, I'm not. No, well, yeah, smell of booze, but uh, we, we meet, we're not saying Martin Clune smells of booze. We, no, we, no, we, no, We're no. taking reference to his character in yeah. Memo Badly. Yeah. We're not saying he likes a drink. We're not saying he's like a nonce. We, you know, he, we, he, he like, might like a drink. We're not saying he's a lush. No, you know, or a teetotal. But you're saying I reek of ale. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 only because I spill most of it. Yeah, with the. It's not my fault. After the, you know, after, the, one. after the accident. It was yeah. balancing oh, it on yeah. their backs that didn't I go felt, down too well. I felt well. terrible the other day, though. Yeah, it's regular as clockwork. On the hour, his right hand starts going. Yeah. Then his left hand starts going. Yeah. And the, if he's got a beer in it, it goes all over the place. It's a bit the, messy, doesn't it, man? Pavlovian yeah. conditioning, though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Since, since the it? age of 14, <laughs> you can't keep his wrist still. <laughs> <laughs> The best thing to come out of Birmingham, so says um, Steve in Surrey. Ricky, the best thing to come out of Birmingham is yourself when you leave. What? If you were to go to Birmingham tomorrow yeah. oh, and then for the leave day it. and then leave Birmingham the, the next the day, you'd be the best thing to come out of Birmingham. That's a compliment. Excellent. That's not, what, even better than Pig from Pipkins. Presumably. Well, presumably. The best. It says the best. That's it. I don't think you're ever going to leave Birmingham if you go there again after saying about the people in London. <laughs> <No. laughs> no, they They're like... getting a linger squad together at the moment. Luckily, they can't hear us. Because <laughs> yeah, they've got no ears. Because the little radio waves that we do just die. Die after That's the true. 25 they go, oh, and that was Mulder and Scott. <laughs> and then it's just quiet. Yeah. Tumbleweeds. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we are the tumbleweeds. <laughs> Carl Graham. <laughs> Gas mask Grimshaw. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mum, my head's getting hot this? again. Are you oh, yeah. impressed? Oh, yeah, it's yeah. fantastic. You Top see, well. Wednesday afternoons at XFM means it's Matt's day. Matt, have you enjoyed yourself today? Yeah, wild horse wouldn't drag me away. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I think you meant to say wild horses, actually. I, I know what it means. Sturgis. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Is for the person who phoned or faxed in last week asking for a frente, and we didn't have it. And you said to me, Ricky, you can't say you don't have it, but I honestly didn't have it, but now I have it, so whoever wanted it, it's for you. Excellent. Does that make sense, yeah. what I just said then? Probably, um, you for know, someone. retired now. Yeah. You know, to, to the country. <laughs> I can't wait for frente anymore, let's shoot off. So, who, who have you just, you've just had someone on the phone or on the fax saying, oh, what about the sneaker, sneaker pimps, if they're from Birmingham. Well, I didn't know if they were are or they not. From, I don't know if sneaker pimps are from Birmingham, yeah, but no, I'm, they I think they are. Them small potatoes compared to... to the Sabbaths. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, Sabbaths. Exactly. What is this, what is this obsession with Sabbaths? I always thought Sabbaths were a bit of like a joke rock band. Like, oh, oh, I, I can't believe oh, you said that. Led Zeppelin is that like the mould of the first rock gods, the greatest um, British band of... Uh, what, yeah, what? who have Led Zeppelin got an influence? You know what, they've influenced that whole brand of poodle rockers with big hair like extreme. That's who they've influenced. That's not their Whereas fault. Whereas the Sabs, their influence has been really heavy, great rock bands like Nirvana and things like that. 
Um, no. Sabbath are the best thing to come out of Birmingham, Ricky. Without it's any shame. Right. Right. Okay, well, okay. Uh, let's do it up to Thursday. I want proper votes, right? Uh, on faxes, right? Who is the best, the most influential, the best, the best band out of Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath? Do You're you playing with fire. Then it's then like comparing out. Bobby Davro to Tommy Cooper. Oh, it's, it, it, oh. it's honestly. I don't think so. I, I think, believe it is. I think it's like comparing. Uh, let's see. Um, Go on. Um, Europe, right? <laughs> uh, with Bernard Butler. Bernard Butler being Led Zeppelin. What? Like, so Wait. Like, oh, no, that's a bit abstract. But they're yeah. both completely crap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, whereas Bobby Davro's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> so tomorrow, Ricky, you says tomorrow we're going to have a debate. It's like comparing. Something I don't like very much with something I like a lot more. <laughs> yeah, but you well, like the Smiths, so you're airing on the side of soft, aren't you? That's Whereas right. Sabbath are hard. Yeah, well, I like hard stuff as well. So you like Europe and Heat Beyond Rapport? No! <laughs> Is that what you said? Other way around. You hate, <laughs> you hate Tommy <laughs> Cooper, but you what? love Bobby Davro. How's that work? No! Well, that's what they're you're twist, saying! They're twisting it, Claire! They ca- Please vote for me! I'm <laughs> by myself in the no. studio. 0171 582000. Never vote for it! Led Zeppelin's better than Black Sabbath! Oh, a lot better today, by the way, because I've been ill all week with this cold. Yeah, the mucus fairy came in the night, did he? <laughs> yeah, he did, actually. It's great. Well, there's a, anyway, yeah. There's this fantastic thing from Bristol University. It was in the Times. Forget hot toddies. The best remedy for a cold is a cup of coffee, according to psychologists at Bristol University. Yeah. The drink yeah. largely eliminated the effects of having a cold. They reported after experiments with 100 volunteers. Trials with vodka had failed to show any be- beneficial effects on mood or performance. Were these trials by vodka by chance, done around the Christmas party period. <laughs> yeah, they've got to make it look good. Oh, and, and the control can be um, coffee. Yeah, yeah, they yeah are, exactly. Uh, vodka versus um, anything. Coffee, yeah. We do our own. Yeah. Definitely. Vodka versus whiskey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's where that gold blend couple was. Always, they never come to the door going, it's not dribbling down. I've just come for some, oh, Jesus, love. wipe your nose, you filthy, oh, <laughs> Jesus. Because it obviously, uh, you know, um, You've been drinking vodka, haven't you? Not the coffee. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Oh, you pissed in your <laughs> snot running down your mouth. Oh, and I, I, I fancied a good sh- sh- cut. The um, <laughs> Sabbath is like Marilyn Manson. Oh, that's oh, it. Oh, it's no more way. Radiohead. No way. Yeah. Oh no. Sabbath is no. like Reef. No, no, Led Zeppelin no. is like the Foo Fighters. No. No. O one seven one five eight oh two thousand. Who's the more influential British band? Sabbath or Zep? Come on, it's obvious. The oh. answer is Led Zeppelin. I'll fax you something tomorrow. Okay. That will uh, tomorrow will all will be revealed. Yeah. Okay. It's Black um, Sabbath, Ricky. I seem to have run out of coffee. <laughs> come in. Come in. I've got some. I'm oh, sorry. I've, I've been got... drinking vodka all day. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, a seven one five eight eight. Not getting any better. <laughs> Two thousand. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of a Led Zeppelin versus Sabbath type quiz. <laughs> yeah, it it's, is, it's, it's it? not a quiz, is it? Yeah, no. Well, it is really because there is a right answer. There is obviously oh, a right answer. No, no. Oh. no. I'm just speaking. There, there must be a right the answer. King of, of, of which has been, you know, who has been more influential? We could, we could trace it back. Of course, we're not the people to do From it. From the Midlands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, I'm. I'm Forgetting the Midlands. Oh, really? Now. We're forgetting just, the Midlands. Just yeah. uh, you know, out of those two, it doesn't matter where they came from. Oh, it's who, a is, fun fight. who who is a more influential band on the world rock scene, Sabbath or Zeppelin? Sabbath. Zeppelin. Sabbath. <laughs> ah, Keenan's two to one. This is two to one. Right, I'll get rid of him now, and we're we're the evens, <laughs> and let be on a vote. Oh one seven one five eight zero two thousand. We've got ten more minutes to leave oh, Campfield. Let's ask Campfield. 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 That is the honour. Go and get him. He's We're in... just going to get him. Anyway, Matt, that's a bit of small talk here. Yeah. So you've enjoyed yourself today, have you? Yeah, I yeah, have. Yeah. But yeah. He's wrong. He's he so is wrong, wrong, isn't he? Yeah, he's having yeah. an aberration. Oh, is he? He, he, he hasn't been listening. Right. Have, right. You, have you heard what we've just been doing? I've uh, you've got no Okay, right. right. Ian no, Campfield. Right. Don't look, don't completely look impartial. Seriously, you two look away, right? Right. Okay. okay. I'm going to ask you. Don't know what, what we think or who thinks. Just answer the question, right? Right. In your opinion, yeah. who is the most influential band right, on the on the world rock scene, right? Don't don't give me any clues. No, no we're not saying anything. Who, in your opinion, is the most influential band, it's a, the better band for you, and who influenced more people, so, out of Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath? 
and what and what scene the rock scene they're yeah, all rock the most scene. influential in, you know in them you know rock and the top. best band yeah the best band it's got to be led zeppelin yes yes, yes! 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 i'm taking yes, it. yes! No! that's it that's it that's you're it. scum that is it because, yeah, yeah, you're because, scum. because because yeah. Led Zeppelin were Led Zeppelin when they weren't, they folded up Black Sabbath great albums with Ozzy Osbourne. Twenty years after that, I'm afraid they went crap. You didn't stipulate the black the Ozzy Osbourne team. You said if we asked Canfield, that would be the bit of you said it, you laid it on the line, we didn't give any clues. Canfield said Led Zeppelin, that's it, I'm happy with that. Play a record. <laughs> Even talk to the listeners. Right, stages. this is incredible. Don't even Why? talk to them. Why? David, David, what's David, what's David Keenan in. took all these, right? Um uh, Led Zeppelin got every vote except one. Every single person was for Led Zeppelin except one, and that wasn't to Black Sabbath, that was to <laughs> Dave Keenan. Out of those two, said, I'll vote Dave Keenan, give him his own show. <laughs> right. So Zeppelin got all the votes, Sabbath got none, Dave Keenan got more than Black Sabbath. <laughs> Thank you, it's official. For the discerning punter, of course, Black Sabbath will always be there. But for people that just say, you know, for people who haven't got any Tyler, people who can't <laughs> use the phone, I wrote the phone, I wrote the phone, but I can't use the phone. <laughs> No, of course, people can use modern technology. It's Led Zeppelin. Excuse Thank me you. a minute. Who did you say, Sturgis? Oh, well, I was going for Sabbath. Right, Sabbath. And did you do the Friday Rock Show on Radio One? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I rest yeah. my case. No, I rest well, my case. Yeah, and so I rest do I. Case. And so no, do and I. So do I. <laughs> and so do I. <laughs> I, can show I think I do. Well, I think I laid my case before <laughs> you, and I rested it there, and it was lounging. Let's <laughs> have that is uh, practically it from us today. Ricky's stormed out of the studio. Keenan stormed with him to Try answer the phone. <laughs> <laughs> you can come back in again, Ricky. Yeah. Just, this is my goodbye link. Okay, go on. Um, goodbye. Oh, for today. that's fantastic. Wow. <laughs> Genius. Well done. All those years. And well done to Led Zeppelin for being voted oh. the greatest band. Um, most influential band out of them and Black we, Sabbath. We, tomorrow, Ricky, it's a shame Matt can't be with us, but tomorrow we are going to have like a Gary Crowley Battle of the Band yeah. type thing, I yeah. think. Like Why? a bit of a demo clash. Why? Why did Because I want to take that? this a bit further. No. What? Keenan's you have to. I just want to play... It's in fighting mood. It. More More it. It. See? I, I know, I know, I know, I know. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. You think they know. Thank Tomorrow. you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being discerning, intelligent people. Keep the faxes coming. Um, to Ricky Gervais and Claire and Matt and Dave. <laughs> they like Black Sabbath. <laughs> it's been a pleasure, Matt, having you on the show yes, this Can I say something before I go? Well, I'm just going to say, I'm going to play Mazzy Star into right. uh, Ian Campfield, Fade Into You, and this is for Melinda. Right who wants to hear it, so that's what I'm going to be playing. But I just want to say, Matt, thank you. Will that's you all right. Can I say something? Next mm, Yeah. Can I just say to Vanessa, food's not love. It was beautiful. It was a great it's worth, worth waiting a week for, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, it's good. The fingerprints of a koala bear are so similar to that of a human being that if they were found at the scene of a crime, the police would not be able to tell the difference. <laughs> Is that... Well, that is the fact that I remember. That is the fact. And is it is it true? Well, well, it depends what, what it, sort of crime I mean, where, it was, really. You, but you got this from a reliable source. Of course, the internet. So let me get this right. The fingerprints of a koala bear are so similar to those of a human being yeah. that if they were found at the scene of a crime, the police would think that a human had committed that crime. Yeah, or oh, vice versa, maybe. What kind of a crime is that? The great koala bear um, eucalyptus robbery. Right. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. they've they've come in, right? The, all the this, all the police have come in, the detectives, right? Quince's come strolling in about half hour later, and they go, "It's all right, Quince. We've solved this one. This is obviously a human being." He goes, "Oh, is it? Oh, is it?" They go, "Well, <laughs> yeah, of course it is. There's, there's a bloke here. He's been bludgeoned to death with a lead pipe in the conservatory. He's a big lad. It's probably a six foot bloke." And he's hit him with the right hand by the window. Quincy goes, oh, it's a six foot black, was it? Oh, yeah. And then, yeah. And he goes, oh, right, no, it's just that, you know, you've ruled out the possibility of five koala bears standing on each other's shoulders, have you? <laughs> In a long coat. <laughs> yeah, with the trilby on, obviously. The yeah. bottom one's the fat one going, oh, where are you going? And the top one's going right, left, and they've snuck, they've they've got, snuck past the security guy. Got, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they've got... He's just, he's just <laughs> said, go on through, sir. Yeah, yes. go on through, yeah, it's a press. 
<laughs> yeah. I've got impressed, right? And I got in there, right? And I got this bloke, I got his confidence. They've got a false moustache, obviously. Of they have. Look, with, like you're growing, yeah. right? And I go, all right, mate. And I go, oh, what's going over there? <laughs> the top one's gone, <laughs> and the bottom one's holding it all up. Then they just scatter. They just scatter, dump leave, the coat. They just leave a coat, like an empty coat with a hat on it. Right? Uh, and Quint, and the and thing is, I think Quincy knows because he's already rounded them up and he's got a confession out of them. Right. And so he's just being really smug. And they're going, oh yeah, yeah, it's a bloke, isn't it? Yeah, it's a human being, yeah. Well, look, Quincy, the fingerprints. Yeah, let's have a look at these. And they go, oh. They're just, they're just like, oh, they're, yeah. Right? And he, but the thing is, I think that there's a Mr. Big. Do you? Yeah, mm. he's up the tree getting stoned on you because it's going, mm. he's getting all the, he's counting his cash. He's just up there hanging loose, catching it, counting his cash. He's fingerprinted, he's got an alibi, <laughs> and these pawns. They're not going to pin anything on Mr. Big. They couldn't. Pin it he's on. used those koala pawns in his <laughs> Yeah. He's a devilish thing. Yeah, and they've done all the work. The little fat one, he's got, he's got bad shoulders now. Yeah. He's got four on him. And the tall one's got the little head with the trilby. He was at the top because he can wield. And like a lead pipe, yeah. the, or the hat fitted him. The hat. Have you got that letter? Ah, yes. No, I have. No, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait till later. Okay, I'll, There's I'll, a great letter. I'll wait till later. Well, I'll play a song then. Oh, please do. But, well, be careful. I mean, if you're a police officer, if you're listening, if you're currently investigating a crime, think. you've got fingerprints, you think you've sewn it up, think again. Just think. Just, just, uh, have never. Have you looked at the koala angle? Expect the unexpected. One from this bag. Do you yes. Mean? So that's right. the first bag. So okay. you, you seem to care about what bag it is. Is that like, the bags are quite important? Right. Okay. I take one from this bag. Yeah. And then I come up with a band name such as let me see the Riff Masters. No. Do, just do that one. Take it from any bag. Yeah. To do that of mine. Take it any one of my bags. See the bag. Yeah. All right. Um, Axial is the first word. Yeah. This is going to be a cool band. Yeah. Axial face. <laughs> Axial face. <laughs> Good of it. You, you just, you, I come up with great ideas. I just, you know, I come in here, I present these ideas and you just ruin them. You just take them in. Read that letter. Mm. Oh, can I just, by the way, before I do that, can I just uh, mention that there is an email address? Yeah. Um, what show is this? How many shows have we done now? Four, five, five or six. Anyway, there is an email address, and I'm thinking that lots of our listeners, I'm almost certain, will have access to internet email nonsense. I personally don't understand it, but if you do, then you can write to Ricky, ricky-gervais at xfm.co.uk. Ah, there's a, there's a bit of a drawback with email. Go on. I don't read it. Do you not know how to do no, it? No, I just don't, don't bother. Get one of the lackeys. I, I empty my pigeon all that once every two weeks. Ricky dash gervais at xfm.co.uk Letters got more chance. Well, possibly. I like getting letters. Here's a letter. Dear Ricky, blah, 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 responding, things I could do for you. Here's the important, this important bit. bit. And uh, this is, by the way, from uh, Siobhan, yeah. in, uh, Siobhan in uh, Wilsdon. Things I could do for you. Uh, <laughs> most, this is a great idea. Yeah. Make you a hat. That's the one I want. Gervais, she can make you a hat. She is a professional hat maker. Yeah. Uh, is it a milliner? Is that the name? Yeah. Uh, but she's a professional hat maker. She can make you a hat. I love it. Gervais. What kind of a hat? Um, what would you fancy? I see you in affairs. Hmm. No. Little red um, fairs. Oh, I know what I want. Go I want, well, you know, those top hats. Those yes. sort of velvety ones. Yes. But squashed down one side like a concertina <laughs> made course. in a top up. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? like a dynamo. Yeah. 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 That'd be beautiful. Beret? Uh, mm, never, no. Beret. What, what kind of a, what is that? What kind of a hat is that? It's a frisbee. It's a beret. It's, 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 it's the, it's the, when you, the, some bloke, he does philosophy for a week, or he's sort of doing French, could be, and he's, he comes in to the student union with a beret on and a goatee, and the first thing you do is take it off and throw it out the window. Of course you do. Of course. You're, because you're with the cool people, and he's going, <laughs> oh, that's really funny, isn't it? Yeah. So mature. Yeah. And you go, no, it's not mature, but it's funny. We're just having a laugh. Anyone you see wearing a beret in a studio or in a pub, just pop it off, frisbee it across the... I'll tell you, you will be the most popular bloke in that Use pub. Him like, he's, he's sort of piggy in the middle, you're just throwing it, you know, <laughs> yeah. different people, it kind of bonds the pub. People, yeah. they, they leave the quiz machine, yeah. they come over and they're joining in and you're just throwing He's screaming, please give me my berry back. In fact, I reckon if you threw it and it hit the hardest bloke in the pub's pint over, he'd look over and they go, who did that? And I go, I did, but he was wearing it. And I go, fair enough, mate. And he... You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. He goes yeah. straight to the guy that was wearing the beret. <laughs> what, kind of a hat, what kind of a hat is that? It's French. I mean, there's the point. That's the answer. Oh, I, I, I don't want to get you on French, people. No, I know. But all um, I would say to you is he's got no brim. 
<laughs> you see, that can be healthy. What's, can we get Siobhan in to measure me up for a hat? So Siobhan, uh, maybe if, if Siobhan's listening, she could give us a call. A mate makes clothes. So, so I could have the whole, I could have the whole suit done. No, I was just going to mention that. She's got a friend, Catherine. She wants us to mention Catherine. Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, she, Catherine's just setting up a new business, all right? Yeah. So best of luck with that, Catherine. And, um, anyway, she can make stuff for you as well. Top hat and tails. Top hat and tails, Gervais, you would look fantastic. I would, not We would send you to the Ritz. Little Lord Fauntleroy. Oh, it would be beautiful. And a cummerbund. Oh, what? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but, oh, that would be great. You in a top hat and tails. Lovely. Lovely. Why, why does it matter which bag it is then? It's too complicated. Let's explain in a minute. Okay. You've got tickets to give away to base. We've almost forgotten about it. Yeah. Well, I've got, um, I've got to think of some questions as well. All right. Well, let's just find out what the prize is first. Uh, right. Right. We've got, um, a pair of Gus Gus. Tickets at Yulu for Friday the 30th of February. Right, let Friday. me look. Can I use hands on that? Yeah. I'll just confirm that they're real. Yeah, of course they're I real. I like that fellow on the, um, on the lot lottery. Yeah, you know, they always go to somebody, a member of the street or somebody in a panto somewhere. Yeah. To choose the numbers, you know. And I'm just going to be like that, just checking. I'll go, just, just, just check that that's a real fork. Yeah, don't check too, don't, you've bent it. Right. So you've bent it, mate. You've bent the fork, mate. Now I can't do the trick. Go on. So two tickets to see Gus Gus at uh, the University of London Union, Mallet Street, London, on Friday the 13th. All right, two tickets there. Yes, bona fide Gervais. Yeah. What else have you got? Corner shop. All right, we'll just check. Yes. Already both nights sold out. Two, That's sought after. Two corner shop tickets here, plus Le Rhythm Digital. This is like a real prize it on is our wonderful. show, isn't it? It's wonderful. That's on Wednesday the 4th of March. Again, it's at the University of London Union. All right, two tickets there for them. Two tickets to Catherine Wheel, mate. To see Catherine Wheel. Again, it's at Yulu. And uh, Catherine Wheel plus special guests on Thursday the 26th of February. So yeah. we've got the tickets there. All right, so we've got, we've got uh, six tickets. Right, I've got a question. I've got a question for the first one. Okay, was that Gus Gus? Yeah. All right, so first one is Gus Gus. The question. A good cool name there, Gus Gus. Does it matter which bag they would have been in? Right, okay. Yeah, and I'll take any answer. What, yes or no? Yeah, I'll take yes or no. I'll better remind them of the phone number. Please Hold do. on, one minute. 0171 580 2000. Call me! <laughs> <laughs> I forgot I'd done that one. So, uh, yes, two tickets for Gus Gus. The question again, please, Gervais. Does it matter which bag they're in? And again, it, um, it doesn't really matter, yes or no. I just take anything. All right, Catherine um, Will, you got a question for Catherine Will? Catherine Will, uh, yeah, when I used to do it, when I, when I was little and we used to have a Catherine Will, my dad would nail it to the shed, set it in the gut light. Well, the nail was way too big and tight. You know what I mean? It moved a little bit and then just, we, what we watched was this thing just <laughs> burn out. Yeah. It was more of a sort of like a yeah. Catherine blob. <laughs> Catherine blob. Yeah, and the question is, that's all right, isn't it? It's not so much a question. <laughs> the question is, that's all right, isn't it? And again, I'll accept anything. Right? I'd better remind him of that number again. Give him, the, give him the number. Hold on. We've got Catherine Will tickets to give away yeah. at the University of London. Yeah. Union. And the question is, not so much a question is, what was it? C uh, Catherine, Catherine Will. Catherine Will, blah, blah, um, It's all right. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah or something like that. Oh, one, seven, one, five, eight, oh, two thousand. <laughs> Call me on it. Right. right. So it's going, it's going well, Javier. Yeah, just, just, does it matter what's bag in? The answer doesn't matter. Okay. Um, <laughs> Catherine Wheel, that's right, isn't it? Right? And call the shop. Call the All shop. All right, now you've got it. Now this is really, this is a gem of a prize. I know, already you've sold got out. Two tickets to see Corner Shop. The gig is sold out. We've got Lay With Them Digital, a very cool band name there. They're going to be supporting Corner Shop. It's on Wednesday the 4th of March. Two tickets to give away. And the question, Javier, is? The Corner Shop in Coronation Street was uh, owned by Councillor Roberts. What was his first name? All right, the number please, Gervais. Hold on, I've got, hold on, one minute. I've quick, got, quick, uh, I'll just remind you of the other questions. Yeah. Uh, uh, mm, I can't, mm, I don't really know. Gus Gus, right, would it matter which bag they were in? Right. I'll accept yes or no. Yes. Uh, um, Catherine Wheel, that's all right, isn't it? Again, anything. And um, Corner Shop. <laughs> Catherine Roberts. <laughs> what was the first name? Oh, 171 580 It's the number to call Catherine Wheel. Corner shop tickets for you. I told well, you, I, I told you they understand. I must say, Gervais, that that was one of the most electrifying radio quizzes I've ever heard. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I think if we, we could option that for the tally. Yeah. We could get the whole spin-off thing going. A board game as well. Yeah. It would just be beautiful. Oh, I'm, th I'm, th I'm thinking ahead. I'm thinking yeah, ahead. That is just great, Gervais. Oh, man, we've just given away six tickets. Right, now, your, your idea was a good one. 
um, you know, all, all um, six. Yeah, my idea, them. my idea was to give away all six tickets to the first person to phone up and give us a damn good reason why they should have them. Yeah, that's a bit traditional, though, yeah, isn't it? It's yeah. sort of like you answer a question right and you win a prize. Yeah. I think this is better. Yeah. But we can do yours if you want. Okay. Okay, so I've got, um, ten CDs. Right. To the person who thinks why they should have all six tickets. You confuse me. Well, I'm going to give ten CDs to the tickets are gone. Right. To the person with the best reason why they should have the t six tickets. Right. But they can't have the six tickets because they're gone. So they're going to get ten CDs. Instead. What's so, the number to call? Oh, oh, you caught me out. Hold on, one minute. One minute. Let me just rephrase that. Basically, we've got ten CDs to give away. Yeah. If you can give us a good reason why you should have the tickets. Yeah. Which, which you, you can't, can't have. Terrips. Terrips. Old newspapers. A lot of my audience carry around bags full of, like, old newspapers going back for a long time. I've no idea why. But everyone that ever speaks to me goes, you, Ricky Gervais? Oh, yeah. They go, I've got these. And they're all old, I mean, tabloids. Uh, and I go, what are the papers for? And they look at me as I'm mad, so I leave it. Mm. But, I mean, there must be a See, market it's not, there. It's not really the sort of ABC1 category that I think a lot of advertisers are after, is it? Is there an Epsilon Minor category for me? <laughs> the thing, I like them. I like my... Um, oh, watch this. For example, right, Steve? Right, this is the sort of quality, right? Um, okay. Uh, whoever phones up for no reason at all, okay, um, sends me a CD. Right? <laughs> right? So call for absolutely no reason at all, right? And don't give your reason to him out there and send me a CD. What? I'll do, I want the winner, right? I'll take caller number 0171 is the number to call. Tinfoil hats. <laughs> Are they trying to steal your mind? <laughs> By tinfoil hats. That's the kind of ad you're going to have on this show, Jimmy. Batteries. I've got loads of batteries. Don't use them. That was that. Uh, that on that. that. What's that? What have we got there? Loads of newspapers. Jabez, the phone lines are buzzing. I know, yeah. The, the phone lines are buzzing. Yeah. I can't understand it. It's the same when another station gives away a holiday to New York. Yeah. It's the same reaction. Yeah. To to whatever the hell it was you said. What was your competition? It was a good competition. What was it? The competition was, um, someone's got a phone up for no reason at all, not give Nick the reason, and send me a CD, and they're the winner. <laughs> the phone lines are buzzing. Yeah. Well, it's a good competition. How do you do this? It's a good competition. I cannot compute. Oh, uh, well, if you can't see that is a good prize to win, then there's something wrong with you. Sorry, I just can't understand it. I, I don't think it's my kind of humour. The, the competition is this, Steve. I th you know, I think you're ooh, a bit wacky. <laughs> I don't really understand. You're frightened, aren't you? I just, mm, you're frightened. You're and, and these people, they're not your phone up, but come into the studio. I know, I know. You were scared last week, mm, weren't you? Mm. He came in the week as well. I, but, you know, I'm kind of, I'm, I kind of like Barry Moore, that sort of thing. I think he's really funny. Yeah. You mean Barry Moore? No. Uh, sort of Silla Black. You know, Steve, you're funny. But nowhere near as funny as me. So I, just with the calls and the competitions, this, well, the competition I think it just sort of goes over my head. Look, look, the competition is this. Oh, sorry to Mark Adams as well. Nick cut you off and he's a regular listener. The competition is this. Someone phones up for no reason at all. Yeah. Don't give the reason away. Send me a CD is the winner. <laughs> it's, it's the way you don't even use grammar. You just, There's no need. Just use words. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you take the words that you say out of these bags? <laughs> yeah. And is that how you form your sentences and your competition? <laughs> I don't it? think of it as forming sentences. I think of it as when my head gets hot, I have to cool it down. And speech is the best thing. It's sort of like, do you know what I mean? I walk on the street and I go, and I have to talk, and it sort of cools it down. I've got some people who've called. Uh, John has called from North Harrow. Louise from Clapton, Claire from Hendon, Paul from Maida Vale. Yeah. I don't know why they called. No reason. I don't know who they are. No reason. Going back to the competition that you set. Yeah. Um, I like that one. We've had a fella, Carl, from Capford. Yeah. Now, he phoned up to try and offer us a suggestion as to how we can receive money for free by begging for it without breaking the law. Oh, he's the winner then. And, is he? Yeah. Well, right. 
Mm. So, uh... The fellow, the fellow on the phones, the fellow's man in the phones even managed to get a CD out of him, persuaded him to send yeah, us a CD. Yeah, he'd be the winner anyway, even if he hadn't sent the CD. Yeah. Mm. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, just trying to, I'm just trying to pick a song here. I haven't worked out my next song. Oh, I, I, Gervais, I'll do that for a while. Gervais, what? I, I don't want to work here anymore. It, it, yeah, be, is that all right? Do you mind if I... No, no, no. There'd be plenty of people wanting to fill your shoes. And think of all the old newspapers I'll get out of it. Wait a minute. Um, was on the tube earlier, mm. Gervais. Now, I know that you walk into work. Yeah. But I do have to take the tube. And uh, there's a guy on there, there's a kid on there, sat opposite me, 10, 11 they be, all right? Um, and he looks quite normal. 12 at the most. Yeah, he's an ordinary looking kid, you know, just got the sort of, you know, street clothes on or whatever. But, um, looks perfectly normal. He's not the kind of kid that's going to get bullied at school, he's just a normal looking kid. Except, Gervais, he was wearing a deer stalker hat. <laughs> <laughs> now, What's happening there? <laughs> oh, I love that. Do you that. know what I mean? When he goes to school on Monday morning, if he's wearing the hat, they're just going to kick the hell out of him. Well, uh, right, we'll we'll pass that on to Howard. We'll keep that. And uh, as I said, if anyone wants to you know, get hold of Howard, do it via us. He doesn't want really to give out his address. Obviously, um, might attract mad people. Mm -hmm. um, now, I read in the paper years ago, and um, there was this guy, right, and he was from Sheffield, and um, uh, he was at the birth of Christ. He'd lived before as a cow. Okay. But, <laughs> yeah. but that's not all. Another bloke who also lived in Sheffield saw this. I was like, I don't believe it. So was I. <laughs> right? There was a chance of that. Okay, yeah, I was a cow as well. And they started. They started this cult called Cattle for Christ. <laughs> just two of them. But I just imagine people going to say, oh, "I was a donkey." But did you see it? No, I was, oh, there was a lot of beam in the way. I couldn't see. And nor could I. No, I was. Well, I was being milked. Couldn't see a thing. <laughs> Where were you? I was a chicken. So you saw everything. No, I was, oh, no, it wasn't. I was so close. Poultry yeah. for the prodigal son. <laughs> that would be, uh, yeah, would be beautiful. Yeah, no, but I, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure there are all kinds of societies like this, and uh, perhaps if you're a member of one, then we'd like to, uh, to, to you know, to find out all about you. Two idiots talking nonsense on the radio. It's a cult. Yeah, of course it is. Well, I am. But, oh, we're going to recreate it. The whole, the tension, the smells, the sights, the sounds, the, the hot excitement. dogs, the hot dogs, most definitely the. The hot dogs. A challenge has been set. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Matt didn't know this, but I'm a bit of a subutio buff myself. He comes <laughs> in here all out with his sheepskin on, right, <laughs> with his little team under his hand, his rolled up, and I go, I'll play subutio. I said, I do, yeah. So, uh, well, the gauntlet was laid down. It was, yeah. We've got uh, Chile against England, but I, I, unfortunately, I haven't got... I haven't got chili, so I brought in Morocco instead. Not Morocco. <laughs> what they call Colombia. Colombia. <laughs> Colombia, yeah. So if any of the defenders mess up, I can always shoot one of them. Yeah, yeah, of course. And that's going to be live. It's 10 minutes each way at 20 to 3 in the we XFM Lounge. We are actually doing a proper football match, yeah. a YouTube football match yeah. on XFM this afternoon. Kick off at 20 to 3, so it's 10 minutes each way. Yeah, yeah. And, and we'll, we'll be dipping in yeah. occasionally to see. The little boy Fraser's going to be the referee. Marvellous. He's the only one that can fit on the pitch and run round. <laughs> of course. Without without disturbing any of the players. Of course. It's a work of genius. And uh, I've, I've picked my team. Have you? Yeah. Already? Yeah, England, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got this. Uh, there you go. Look at him. Look at it. Look at his face. Gus coin here. He's so pleased. Look at him there. He's only an inch high. But look at him. I've got Gus coin there. Incy, Batty. Um, semen there. I don't know about that. That's all over Nigel Martin is in gold. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, uh, I'm going to put this there. Um, but I'm not mine. Matt bought it in, you filthy. Um, yeah, no. so, anyway, we're going to... Apparently, for goalkeepers, Stuart, though, most women prefer flowers to semen. So. Really? Yeah. Oh, Matt! Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, so uh, we're gonna, I'm going to go and um, they'll check out the pitch, warm up, and... Uh, Matt, and where Matt, are we doing it? In the Matt's Exeter another, Lounge? Matt's another point. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and we're a live link, we refer in everything, it's going to be amazing, Claire. It's, uh, this is radio, this is what radio's meant to be yeah. like. Yeah, two Football, grown men yeah. playing Subutio and doing semen puns. That is exactly <laughs> that what radio is, is meant what, to be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's cross over live now to the living room just down the corner. Let's uh, round the corner, down the corridor. You know what I'm trying to say. The crowds are there. Ricky and Matt are there. Are we ready We're for ready. kickoff? Let's do it. I I've won the kickoff, Claire, and uh, I'm starting off. Uh, 
Oh, there's some of the crowd. And it's, it's off. Uh, we're away. There it goes. It's a beautiful it's thing. He's moved down the pitch. It's gone oh, to the floor. Oh, no. It's, it's blown it's up. Chilly to, now. Oh, oh. Chilly on the break. Oh, oh it's a foul. It's a terrible dirty foul. England, oh, the, the crowd don't like that much. And uh, it's just went up there. There he is. He there's flicked a plastic man. Barry Spinnaker there and little Tommy Tomkinson. Yes. The, uh, Jimmy him. Twizzler. Oh, there he is. Oh, but they've oh, given it away. Straight, straight away. away. It's, a, it's, a number, it's the number 11 there. And he's, he's running all the goal oh, kicks. Oh, oh, it's a goal kick. It's a goal kick. There's a little boy phrase there on his horn. Right. On his final one. Half time. Half time. Half time. That's it. No, we'll be back in a minute. That's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, that, is, that is stupid. We can have a penalty shootout, though. I nearly sprained myself, then. I had to stop in mid-swing. <laughs> That's happened before, though. <laughs> we will be back at the exit. Mum, I don't want any tea. I'm busy. You're very good with your fingers on. Right after this. <laughs> The bar, the score, England versus Chile is nil and nil. It's time to go back to the XFM living room. For the second half of the match this afternoon, let's see how it's looking. Well, uh, Claire, uh, it's, uh, England are down to ten men. I had to pull one of my players off at half time. That's very kind of you. My, my boys only get oranges. <laughs> I used to do that for mine, but they wouldn't put the tights on and have the bag over their heads. But here we go. Here we go. And it's our, oh, look at that lovely ball there. A huddle type ball into nowhere in particular. Um, oh, it's chilly again. They're, they're turning around. They're in my, oh, they're in the, it's a, oh, they found his own player. They missed it completely. England move up there. And it's a dirty foul. It's a dirty I'll foul. I'll take it. Quite, quite a dangerous area. He's moving to. He's not. Oh, oh. One, two, oh, here we go. I've oh, never it. been in such close proximity to you, Ricky. England in possession again. Oh, look at this move here. It's like you have to oh, they're, 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 they're keeping it. They're playing with the ball oh. now. Oh, oh, it's a foul. It's a foul. They're, he's going to take it quickly. It's there. Oh, it's a dangerous. England in the 15 yard. Oh. oh, so close. Still England's. Still England's there. It's in a dangerous position. Oh. Nil, 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 nil. That is the end of the match then. So uh, I guess what extra time? Penalty shootout. Penalty shootout. Yeah. Out. Okay. Beckons. Right after this. <laughs> so as we recreate the England Chile match tonight, this afternoon, in fact, here live on XFM, down there in the living room, we have Ricky and Matt. Ricky representing England on the Subutio table. Matt is doing the business for Chile, although he hasn't got any. Chile team members, he's using the Columbia ones, but don't you worry about that, we cross over live now, back to the XFM living room. Go. Hello. Oh, here we Hello. are. Can you hey. hear me, Claire? The tannoy is on. The tannoy's on. <laughs> well, uh, uh, England are going to take the first penalty, it's just uh, the best of three, and his goalkeeper keeps jumping up and kicking it with his back. It's a scorpion kick. Yeah, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Now, can I just like say as well, I feel slightly stupid because we could be in the studio pretending to play this, but we are two well, no, you really sprawled are. out, Absolutely. my knees are killing me, we've got the whole thing out, we, it took us about an hour to tape it down. I'm in trouble with my mum because I'm missing me tea. <laughs> yeah, right, here we go. Okay, so that's just very quickly, so the score is nil-nil, this is uh, the I'll penalty look. shootout, off that, you go. Yeah. Okay. Yes! Yes! England 1-0 up. 1-0. England 1-0. Oh, oh Gervais! Amazing scenes here. Oh, I can't believe it. Okay. Was that a save? Yes, of course it was. It was England, a beautiful save. England in the lead. Oh yes! Oh. It's two nil. It's two nil. Chile have to score this to stay in. Oh, I saved it! Oh, oh, amazing scenes! Oh, it's coming off! It's coming off! They can't win. Yes! Obviously, I'm very disappointed. Oh, 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 boys, well done. Just like to say thanks to everyone. I'm faith to me. Uh, I, I, I know, I knew I could do it. There was a lot of criticism, but thanks, thanks, we've done it. We've done it. <laughs> And as we say goodbye to the XFM living room, there's Chumba Wumba with Tub Thumping playing over the tannoy. Oh, the boys will be back in the studio for a bit of a post-match analysis.
joined by Ricky Gervais and Matt Ambound, team captains, Ricky Gervais England, Matt yeah. Ambound Chile, although it was Colombia, but it, it, it's I mean, only because it's the, the, South the, American, isn't it? Yeah. The really embarrassing thing is, not only that we actually went through with it, Even, yeah. but that we didn't care whether it was on the radio or not, we were having a brilliant time. <laughs> yeah, with my heart, I just wanted to win so badly, Claire, I just wanted to win so badly. Oh, God, I'm going to put that goal past him. He did not, oh, God, it was just amazing. Yeah, you looked like a happy man. And the boy yeah. Fraser did well. He was, he was the loving it. Fraser. He was jumping up and down. He ruled it with a rod of iron. He I did, know, yeah. He? I know, yeah. We, well, we'll leave it there. Yeah. Do you know what we haven't had time to do this afternoon, Matt? What's that? All those autographs you got. Oh, uh, Schiffer, Modine. All of them. Cranky. You got, we got all those autographs, and we're going to give them away today. Now, yeah, what do you we reckon? Should we do it next week? Sweet. No, I'm going to keep them. Okay, Small fine, yeah. No, yeah. To hell with the listeners. Yeah. No, going. all right, we'll come up with the competition next week. We'll do it next week. Yes. We, I mean, seriously, Ricky, we have got all these autographs. That's, that is like a lovely prize, quite seriously. You didn't really get cranky, did you? <laughs> no, I didn't get cranky, no, got no. A photo, got a photo she was off with Pollard. Drinking really? gin, yeah. Oh, no, it's got it was, to be libelous. It was, it was a lovely <laughs> at, least, at least he said Allegedly. Off, off with drinking gin. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But once again, thank you for the effort you put in this afternoon for that match. Uh, it, it's my pleasure. Um, and the fact that, you know, it's not sad, the fact that you did actually play. Oh, it was amazing. I let you win. Did you see the second goal? I then? did see the second goal. I let you win. And I also, Ricky... <laughs> oh, no, no, rubbish. No, I did. I dived in oh, away. rubbish. I did. I've accepted that the prize. Is no, it's true. That is rubbish. No, I wanted England to win, so that's it. That's that is no. Nice.